Okay, my, my name is Pooh Sprague. My wife Ann and I uh, own Edgewater Farm here in Plainfield, New Hampshire. Um, our bent on weeding is that uh, we're trying to be somewhat biodynamic, trying to remove ourselves from the use of pesticides. Um, it's not a religion with us. The way we feel about land stewardship as a profitable farm is the most important thing. So uh, cultivators are important to our regime, but uh, if I have to use a chemical, I've got, got them on stock. They're part of the total program that we use. This is the Lily Weeder uh, that we acquired last year. It cost us, uh, I think, in the vicinity of 17 to 1800 bucks. We bought it at that time with the gauge wheels, which is an optional uh, thing. Uh, I like it because it controls the, the height a little better. Uh, if you're in an area where your tractor makes a little dip, you don't have that action of digging in. The gauge wheel keeps it, floats it uh, a little, gives a little bit of regulation and flotation over the top of the crop. Um, I use them also for to, to uh, adjust the tension of the springs. Um, just by pulling out, the, by lifting this up, I can get more action on top of the crop just by raising and lowering the gauge wheels. Uh, the normal way to adjust these is, is by moving this spring back and forth in this uh, bracket. And as you can see on this machine, uh, that takes quite a while. So uh, we use the gauge wheels. As a matter of fact, we use gauge wheels on pretty much all of our three-point hitch cultivators. Uh, this is an updated version of an old Dearborn weeder, which they used in the 30s. And how it works is that these tines will vibrate as it goes over the, the uh, crop. I use the Lily specifically for drag off of potatoes, uh, up to certain growth stages on my leafy crops. And uh, when crops get a lot larger, uh, spinach four to four or five inches high, I'll, I won't use it anymore. I also use it in conjunction with my baskets a lot of times. The baskets will churn up in between the rows and the action will break up the clods. It'll also mulch around the plants that way. So I use it not only as a separate tool but often in, in conjunction with another tool. Our soil is very sandy, uh, so this, in the land that is very sandy, this is well suited for shallow cultivation. Uh, and of course, we don't want to disturb much soil, one, either to turn up weeds, or two, to, to, to let any moisture out, especially on a year like this where it's so dry. So this is an ideal thing. Uh, you have to use it at least weekly. Uh, I'm pretty good about it, except during strawberry season. Things get ahead of us, but uh, if you use it weekly, uh, you can get crops out without even having to go through and hand hoe. So it's, it's, it's an important item on the smaller vegetables. Uh, this is a budding basket weeder that we use alone and in conjunction with the uh, Lily weeder. Uh, our beds are 60 inches from wheel track center to wheel track center. All my tractors are set up that way. And I can seed uh, three rows of spinach, radishes, what have you, at 17 inches apart. So these are set up to do pretty much all the crops as well um, as I can use this side dresser in conjunction with it to uh, scuffle in, uh, do the activity of the machine. I can scuffle in uh, calcium nitrate, whatever I want to put on. These are a little different than some, and uh, you'll notice the wires here are at ang an angle. I used to have just flat, straight wires across like that, but I put them on the edge because uh, I put these angled uh, wires on at the edge so I get a little more aggressive action on the edges of my bed. And uh, the, I guess another thing to point out perhaps is that um, we use, uh, I use one chain, uh, I use a couple of chains on so that I get the uh, driving action uh, in the back, that rear set of baskets will, as you can see, turns a little faster than the front ones. This kind of dimples into the soil and roots out the plant, and that second line will come right behind and sort of kick it out, kick it out, under, and so it lays on top of the ground. So uh, I understand that some growers will use these units without chains and run them over the top of the row, but right now I'm using it uh, set up like this to kick weeds out. Um, throw a little soil into the plant, and then by coming behind with the lily, I can also uh, kick a little more soil and whatever, break up any clods or small clods that are on top of the soil surface. 
The tractor speed that I use really depends upon the soil I'm in and how, how much soil I'm throwing around and how small the, the, uh, the crop that I'm cultivating is. Uh, you're in beans and, and they're up pretty good. I'll, you know, I'll clip along four to six miles an hour. Uh, got out some newly transplanted lettuce and I want to go between it. I'm a little, a little more tender with the joystick, I guess. This tractor, like the other Kubota, is an offset high-wheeled uh, tractor, and with it came this, this set of uh, sweeps and shanks, or a full set of sweeps and shanks. We use this, we have a, uh, a couple of discs we use for hilling. Uh, we use this to go after uh, weeds when they get out of control uh, in crops like beans. As you can see, here's a red root pigweed. You can imagine he was a pretty good sized beast. And these shovels, uh, are good at doing just that. They bury, they root out. Um, they're very, very aggressive. Although we use them to cultivate uh, the edges of our plastic. On the front here, I have a half sweep, which is basically a sweep with one side cut right off, and I can get right up close to the pl plastic. I can side dress it at the same time, the edges, and I can also throw dirt in with the uh, rear sweeps back on top of the fertilizer, all in one, one, one pass. So it's pretty versatile, even though it's, uh, it's quite a chunk of iron. But when things get that bad, this is the kind of heavy artillery you really want to have. These can be set up in many different configurations by taking these off. And, and uh, as I say, I may take this sweep off and put a hiller and hill potatoes, uh, getting the weeds farther out between the rows of potatoes. I used it in beans this morning, cropping, uh, cultivating a crop of beans. I'll set this up differently inside with a side dresser on the other side and side dress and cultivate two rows of corn at a time. Um, these shanks and, and sweeps are a little rough for doing the kind of work that we use the, the lily with and the uh, budding baskets. But uh, for your larger crops, pumpkins, vine crops, things on plastic, uh, beans, when they get up to a certain, after they get to about three or four inches, you can go in there and, and use this kind of uh, tillage tool quite effectively. One of the things I like about the sweeps and shovels on doing uh, uh, beans or things you would have in a line on bare soil, whether it's peppers or, or uh, if you're growing them on bare soil or small tomatoes, we grow our uh, pumpkins and winter squash. One of those things that those sweeps do is they actually throw a little soil back on the plant, and this is pretty, pretty well demonstrated in this situation. The outer sweeps will, will kick out, roll over uh, pigweeds, stuff in the middle, it will uh, actually hill in and throw soil on top of the uh, weed. Here's some crabgrass that, that uh, is, is covered up uh, with soil. Um, it's going to restrict the growth of that plant. Uh, this crabgrass will come along, obviously, but it's will be set back a great deal more than the bean. And anything that's smaller than that will obviously be suffer, uh, uh, smothered. So uh, you not only get the action of, of, of destroying the actual destroying the weeds in cases, but also smothering new growth under the canopy of the plant, um, which I like. If you notice up front here, there's a half sweep which means that it doesn't have, I don't know if you get a shot of it, but it doesn't have this, this half of the cultivator at all. Um, that's, that's a very handy uh, tool to get up close to, to plants. We also use that uh, in cultivating the edges of our plastic. Our tomatoes, our peppers, our melons, squash, cucumbers, eggplant, all is all on black plastic. And then when we put them out at transplant time, we cover them with hoops and reme. So at the time we take the reme off, we have an awful mess of crabgrass and broadleaves that's growing along the edge of the plastic and has also been nurtured in that environment along with a desired plant species. It's also got a lot of weeds in there to deal with. Um, when we first started uh, farming for several years, that just meant an interminable amount of hand labor, uh, of hand weeding. And with this particular, not the way the machine's set up here, but now we cultivate, we take the reme off, and by taking these two chisels off, these two sweeps off, we move these half sweeps out, we reverse them so that the sweeps are out here, just inside the tire tread. And we can go right down along those uh, edges of the plastic, right underneath them, just barely. 
Sometimes it'll even throw the dirt off the plastic, but what it'll do is any of the weeds growing in that area will be flipped out and rolled over, almost in a plow-like fashion. And then behind, we have a set of duck feet cultivator that we put the pump point right on the center of the tire, and that will come right along and throw soil right on top of the weeds. So we can really minimize the cultivating of the edges of the plastic, which is a great, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a great labor saver for us. And as far as the middle of the row, we, we seed that down to a cover crop of uh, clover, so we don't have to cultivate out there. We were talking a few minutes ago about uh, cultivating the edges of the plastic. Here's an example of, of uh, some plastic that was just recently cultivated. Um, we put, pulled a remay off over a week ago, and because it's strawberry season, we didn't get in here and cultivate immediately, which we should have. So uh, yesterday, I came in here, and we were dealing with, you can see, some pretty large weeds here. And here again, uh, despite the size and the thickness of the weeds on the edges, we were still able to, to but that front shoe was able to chisel these things out. We were able to throw calcium nitrate in at the edge and the rear sweep was able to come through and bury a lot of the weeds and uh, co cover a lot of the calcium nitrate in the edges of the plastic. And this is the end result. 